I'm a very tough for anybody to try to cut the door. You probably see them flying. Well, let me say this. I heard a message, you know, testimonies is always been there. They should always be shared. But that testimony, whenever you hear a testimony, you should realize that it would be something in there for me or for a certain person. Testimonies are given that someone needs. Amen. I heard two, two, two messages in Lady Byron's testimony. And one the Lord was saying, stand. Uh, stand of what you have put faith in. Don't give up, somebody. Jesus. Don't give up on what you are standing. Now God may orchestrate a lot of different things. And the testimony is not just for the blessed. It's to mold you into a position of believing in and growing in your faith. Amen. Amen. That's my message. <laughs> <laughs> but I wanted to I wanted to say it. Stand. And 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 the other word that I heard it was Because in, in a testimony, you really, what is going on, you really having to go through something. A tax. And in that attack, we are growing. You must realize what is taking place. Because a lot of times we get a testimony, we go through something, and we have a testimony. Well, we don't, listen to what I'm going to say, we don't learn anything. You ever had a child that went to school and they really got bullied or maybe treated wrong by the teacher? And in that, they, you, you was really oh, wanting to protect them and help them through it. But when it was all over said and done, your child learned something through that. And you wanted your child to learn something through that. We must realize that in an attack or in going through something, you must learn. You must learn what is God saying to you. And I'm sure Lady Myron, she, she talked about the process of what she went through. That what come against her. But she stood and she committed saying, God, you are what you have. Now, what do you allow God to keep working out of your life? Y'all making me so funny. I see you. I love y'all. God bless y'all. I want you to, if you all, pay close attention to what I'm going to be talking about today. In, in, in ministering and preaching, you have to understand, when you're, when you're going to receive, You want something really from God. 
get your heart prepared to extract it. Don't look at the person. Look for God to speak to you as you need. Because just as much as I'm giving, listen to what I'm saying, you're pulling. You're pulling your answer. Yeah, pink, pink, pink. This is what I want you to do, is that there will be words. What did God say about his word? He said, man should not live by bread alone. Have you ever really, really thought about that? This, I'm going to have my bread. But he said, you will not live by bread. Have you ever really truly just meditated on it? But he says, but every what? Word. Every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. When you hear that, it, 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 it should bring note to that I cannot, I need this, I need the bread, but what do I need the bread for? What am I needing the bread for? It's for the temple. It's not for my spiritual growth. Is for my temple. So if I need the bread to for this temple, then I need something for my spirit. You should be learning how to live inside out. Okay. okay. I want you to listen to I'm a, I want to go to the word. And I want you to understand that. <coughs> It could be a particular word. I say this often. A particular word that God is giving to you. Do you realize that in your prayers, what do you mean? You mean the word. So every time that I go through something I, and I win that battle, that means I should do what? I should go. Uh, using the child in school for to grow and learn. Correct? Let me pray. Father, I thank you and praise you. Lord, you're so awesome. You're so awesome to allow us to come into this place. We honor you. We bless you. Lord, thank you for your precious Holy Spirit. Bless your people today. Touch their lives, their bodies, their souls, and their spirit. Lord, let the bread of life fill them and let the word grow. Lord, let your anointing fill this place. Touch me that I may bring forth the bread of life and bring the living to heal and to your people. Father, I thank you and thank you. This is an awesome day to be before you. When you pray to God and glory, Father, I ask it all in Jesus' name you I say amen. Amen. We are living a time where there is as confusion. We're living in a time where we need answers like we've never needed before. The media, the television, if you notice, you can't even watch a simple picture without it commercial after commercial. It's just many commercials as it is the movie. 
what did what do they do? They're trying to give you information to lead you to whatever product, whatever. But it's amazing how they engineered it to break right in now on the movie. And get, by the time you get back to the movie, you've seen over 20, 20 commercials. To flood you with what you think is the answer. I'm a I'm titling my message today. You are rast you are in a wrestling match, but who are you wrestling with? Second Corinthians ten and four. This is what the word says. For the weapons of our warfare are not common, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Mighty through God to pulling down strongholds. What is a stronghold? Something that binds you, something that it, it takes a hold of you. It wants to hold you in place. And go to Ephesians 6 and 12. I want you to understand. That. We are, you're not wrestling with your flesh. Ephesians 6 and 20. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. You're not wrestling with the person that cursed you. You're not wrestling with your family, family member that says something to you to run you wrong. You're not wrestling with your supervisor. Your children. So, but if you stay in that avenue, you're defeated. Look what it says. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Against powers. Against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. Something you have to realize about these, these particular names, their levels of demons. And we must know, you must know who you are wrestling with. Because if you get in a wrestling match with, with your loved one, or your supervisor or your mate, you are inviting one of these demons into your place or your space. Now how much quicker, think about this, Satan, they call him the accuser of the brother, day and night. Have you really thought about that? He's the accuser of the brother day and night. That means he doesn't have to sleep. So if he's the accuser of the brother day and night, that means he's just waiting for you to slip up. He's just waiting for you. We as Christians give more access to the devil than the people in the world. So now, why is that? Because he already got them. But he wants access to you to end you. Listen to what it says. Against spiritual weakness in high places. Mostly that's what we deal with here on earth. 
and principalities and powers are more into the higher places. Our government, president. But look, let me let me say this to you. You got to understand what the wrestling means. When you're in a wrestling match, I used to go uh, in, I retired from teaching and then I went to Bishop McGinnis and dealt with sports and travel. And it was, I went to a lot of wrestling matches. And I learned something. And I learned that to watch the matches, it, it was often that I said, how they had to maneuver themselves in different ways, different tactics. It's a lot of wrestling. It's the same with spiritual wrestling. You may be at times wrestling with angels, ministering spirits, not just demons and attacks, but sometimes, sometimes God loves a good wrestling match. Because he's, he's, he wants you to grow. He, wants, he said sometimes things have to be taken by force. So he wants you to learn how to be strong in God. Strong in his might and not yours. So sometimes God will bring you into a wrestling match with him. And he, he, because a lot of us, we give up. We are, we are trained sometimes to go to a certain place. And we've been trained to get to that certain point, then we give up. We're willing to bow out. Or maybe the pressure's too much. And we're willing to, 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 to lean to another side. And you have, to, you have to realize you are a new creature in Christ. Old things, the old you should have died and passed away. Just imagine you continuing to go out and dig up your old man and drag him on your back. That's a lot of pressure. That's a lot of weight. That's heavy. But a lot, of, a lot of Christians do that because you're familiar with their way. When something dies, a lot of times you try to get it back. Old relationship. Old song. Now, it brings you to the familiar place of what you, what, how you felt. Bringing you to, into feelings. Uh, if you're familiar with Bill Paul, he, he wrote a song. Me and Mrs. Jones. <laughs> 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 Really? 
<laughs> See, you have to realize what you're really wrestling and who you're wrestling. I want to give you a, 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 a real revelation that God showed me. Your revelation is not with you. It's not with your flesh or nobody else. Your revelation of what you're going through with wrestling is in your hearing. It's in your hearing. It's what you're hearing. What are you hearing? <clears throat> Billy Paul and those that music back then, they about the eyes of the brothers. These great singers they left us with, they left messages. And we had, we was guided by all of those messages by, because of what we heard. And someone being aggravated with you or using profanity with you, you hear those words, but you're hearing something else that brings you into a place of action, reaction. Listen to what he says. I want you to understand. Anytime that you're dealing with something that has caused you a lot of problems, it's because of something that you have heard in your hearing. Satan will always, when God gives you like a message or you hear something that you get from God, Satan will always counter. He will always come back with something to try to keep you in that same place for getting the victory. Right? Matthew 4 and 1. Talk about Jesus right here. It says that Jesus four and one was led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward a hungry. And when the tempter came, he said, he said, if thou be the son of God, Command these stones to be made bread. <coughs> but he answered, let me say something to you. When the enemy comes to you, what do you say? What is your reaction? The problem that we have so much in the attack is what you hear, you tend to lean to it. But you tend to rehearse it. And you rehearse it in your feelings. Well, I'm just, I don't know how I'm going to make it. I don't have anything to eat. Nothing. In, see, if you're hearing the word, you must respond. When you hear Satan come against you, talking to you, well, you ain't going to be. You, you, what are you going to do? You must have the word in you enough to respond back against the attack. But if you are still in the old man, that's how you're going to respond. It's interesting that they might say, what she had to look at somebody else being elevated right in the midst of her pressing in prayer. But her response was, God, you, you got this. You know, you know what you're doing. See, 
the initial part of what you what you're making your your statement, it reflects in the way you go along. Y'all looking at me funny now. Listen what what Jesus said. The tempter came and he said, if, see Satan always got, well, you know, if it's might not, you might have to do this. If thou be the Son of God, command these stones to be made weak. But he answered and said, is it not written? Do you know what's written in your situation? Do you know what's written when your attack comes? Do you know what's written when Satan starts talking to you? Do you know what's written? This is why we must have the word. Amen. The word must be in you so when, when Satan calls, it comes out of you. Amen. 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 He said, look what he says. Should not live by bread alone, but every word just said, that proceeded out from the mouth of God. What are you hearing that's leading you? That puts you in a place that you, you're not having victory. What are, what are you hearing? something that has to do with knowledge of God's word. Amen. How much time do you spend in prayer? Amen. How much time do you commune with? Him? How much victory do you have? How excited are you about the word? Amen. How, how do you see and hear God working in your life. Because see, everything that you're hearing brings change. That's why you see so much that's placed on the TV or so much of, of, to get you in a place of fear and not yielding and relying on God. There are great attacks in the earth now. Not just on Christians, but on the world. You say you you look at there's storms on one side with floods. There's another on another side with fires, with tornadoes, with hurricanes. It's all around us. But where what are you hearing? What are you listening to that makes your stand? What are you saying that elevates and exalts God? Because see, your words that's in your mouth, it says the power of life and death are in your tongue. Yes. If you begin to, when the attack comes to you and you say, Father, I thank you and I praise you. You gave me victory. You made me the head and not the tail. I'm the overcomer. Lord, you ordered my steps. God, I know I have the victory. These are the words you must have heard. Reading brings you to a place of hearing. Can I go a little further? I love what the, uh, the NIV says about weapons. The weapons we fight with are not weapons of the world. On the contrary, surely, they have what divine power. Do you realize what is placed in you is a divine power to speak? Amen. But Satan wants to trap you in a place of let me be the secret person that talked to you. 
Come and let's sit down and let's, let's talk. See, that's what he did with Eve in the garden. He waited until he could talk with Eve and ask her. He said, did God really say you're going to die? So what, it, what, what does the word say to you when Satan talks with you? What are you operating in that you've heard? Because see, if, if you've been constantly going through your flesh with emotion, you're hearing something different from what God's word is saying. Amen. Hmm. You're hearing something that you're being led by. That you're walking. You're in a trap. You're wrestling, but you don't know who you're wrestling with. You're not wrestling with God. Principalities and powers. Have you, when the last time you walked through your house and prayed? When the last time have you put your foot on Satan's neck? When the last time have you bound him from coming against you, coming against your family, coming against your children? We as Christians worry ourselves to defeat. Worrying is more prevalent than prayer. I'm just worrying myself through this. And that's what Satan wants you to do. The power and the anointing of God is in your life. But Satan, he was, I have found that in prayer, that I spend time with prayer, that God ignites my actions. What does the Bible say? Faith without works are what? They're dead. We have too many dead Christians today. Dead in prayer. Dead in power. Amen. Looking for somebody else to do it. Coming in church and just want to be comfortable. Not coming with a praise. Not coming with a testimony. You better yeah. preach God you. said, I called you. He said, the Holy Ooh, Spirit is fire. Amen. Yes. He burns up the chaff and the iniquity. Yes. Imagine if you turn your stove on and you don't get nothing but a puff of wind. No fire. You want fire to be extracted to cook. Amen. You want fire to be able to meet your need when you want to be warm. You want fire when you get in your car, you want some heat. You want fire. Many situations we need fire. But we definitely need to be in our temple. Amen. You should be fired up in the Holy Ghost ready to pray in every season in and out. You should be anointed to, if somebody calls at you and calls and say, I need to touch and agree with you, I need prayer. Amen. You should be the person to say, I'm right here for you, I touch and agree. Why, is it, why do we not recognize Christians? Christians are not even recognizing it. It should be that I have to talk with you to recognize who you are. I should know you when you pass by because the wind of the Holy Spirit is upon me. What are you here today? What are you yielding yourself to? Then you can break the yokes and bondage. Are you an add to your church? Are you the weak man? You're not just sitting in a chair. Don't you realize you are in a body of Christ? Amen. Fitly joined together. What? How much longer does the church have to wait for you as the person? to do what you're supposed to do. Amen. You chose it, the priesthood. God said, I called you out of the womb and created you out of the ark. 
made and molded, shaped you. Uh, he said he knows every hair on your head. But you don't even know his voice. God is waiting for the saints to come forth. We too busy wondering, well, I don't know if I want to go to that church. Well, I don't know if I need to be over there. I don't know which way I'm going. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. Is God confused or you? Amen. Are you waiting on God or is he waiting on you? Are you still meek in this situation? He's not calling the ass. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. You still in the past when God said, I need you in the future. Oh, yeah. Jesus. Come on now. You didn't have to do it to me. I need your prayers to be pulling down. I need the anointing upon your life to walk in the church and cast out of What death. you say. Amen. Why are we still willing to eat dead bread, old bread, when God said, I got a life of abundance for you? Yes. He said, I, I ordered your steps. I blazed the trail. He said, what are you waiting on? He said, I got I own a thousand cattle on the hill. I'm ready to bless you, but you need to come forth. You got people been going to some churches for 10 years and still have a joint. You leave out of church and hear a message and you haven't extracted nothing. You go home and turn the football game on and nothing what was said means anything to you. We living in a time when people, they got every fitting Caleb made emotional TV for you today. Amen. I seen a commercial on TV. This commercial has been running in a while. I don't know if you caught it or not. But it comes on and it talks about HIV. And they start out with this commercial. They have two men standing there. They have two men yeah. laying in the bed together. And the one says, well, we would have used some protection, but we got distracted. And they go through a host of people saying why they did from males to females to two women. They're, they're promoting something out there. They're bringing something new. They want the Christian to accept what the world. Jesus. Accept it. Don't have a change, but then in. While we're sitting in there just continually pouring this out, what are we doing? You should be the power of the Holy Ghost in your very neighborhood. Amen. You should recognize what demons are acting yes. in your neighborhood, yes. on your street, yes. with yes. the children, because you go in your prayer closet and you bind no spirits of homosexuality, foul, unclean spirits, abomination, deceiving, de detrimental demons. Yes. What are we doing? What are we hearing? Are you hearing faith? The Bible says, Romans says, faith comes by what? Hearing! But what are you listening to? You carry the same thing in Christ that you had 15 years ago. Jesus. And you ain't moved no further. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. I feel ashamed when I'm not serving God in his power. Amen. Why would you, if you got, if you got a Ferrari sitting outside, you go crank it up, and you, it sounds like a Volkswagen, you got a problem. <laughs> and when you, when you take off, it, 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 it doesn't do the 10 miles an hour. You got a serious problem. You want power. 
Why would I want to serve a dead body? There's no other stone that's been removed but Jesus. Amen. All the others and stones are still there. Yes, we should be standing. I got five minutes. Should I say that again? <laughs> <laughs> What are we really doing? What, what have we heard that has been useful to our soul? That's caused us. He said, how come you to run and not get ready? To walk and not faint. He's getting a sword in your mouth, but what are you using it for? Amen. Amen. Listen, we need change. Let me say this. Mark 4 and 24. Listen to what it says. Let this burn into your soul, into your spirit. Mark 4 and 24, he said to them, be what careful for what you are hearing. The measure Of what you hear shall be added unto you. I'm gonna read it in a different way when I when I caught this that I really love. Just listen to this. Be careful what you are hearing. The measure of thought and hear and study you give. The truth you hear will be measured of virtue and knowledge that comes back to you. More besides will be given to you who hear. In other words, whatever you're hearing is measured in your faith. So if it's measured in my faith, that means I'm going by something that I'm hearing, whether it's negative or positive. When's the last time we witnessed to someone? What, what, when you are you able to go somewhere and, and and, and sensitive enough to the Holy Spirit to know somebody needs a word from you. What are you hearing? Wherever you go, you should be an instrument of power. Satan should look at you and say, God, I hope you don't get up this morning. I hope she don't have to go to work today. Maybe they'll have a day off because she just keep preaching and ministering and got word in her for children and teachers. Satan should be worried when he sees it. Do you know there are spirits? If you, if you get yourself back in the word, you will see, you will see these things. Yes. You will recognize who it is. Yes. Their spirits out here, they have to go back to report the same. And they say, well, how they do it, how they do it over there at Fern Foundation? The imps got to go back and say, you know, they, they, they do nothing. They got a hedge around. They got anointed people in there. How is it? Oh, they have yes, people to get healed. There's people getting yes. saved. Yes. They're joining the church. Say it, Jesus. Jesus. Woo! Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Lives are being changed. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. We can't penetrate the cost of in prep. Hallelujah. Deliverance is taking place. Yes. Healing, miracles. Saints, 
said, well, you're going down the street to the next door, to the next church, and see what's happening down there. Is your house one, Satan looks at, he said, he got to stand out in the other yard because he can't come over there to yours. You pass by people's homes, and you see, you see certain places, and you recognize what they are going through over there. They're going, then you look right at the neighbors, and you just, it's just like a glow. Amen. It's amazing when you get around somebody that's got peace. Yeah. Woo! Yes. It's amazing and powerful when you get around somebody that's got peace in their life. And you don't know why. You just you wanna you wanna just talk to them. You wanna yes. you want you you because you're trying to find something that you can hear to bring you out of what you've been through. Amen. Trust me, when you go through hell, you're gonna want to hear something different. Huh? So true. Amen. Go through hell and see if you ain't ready to listen. I know that's right. Amen. 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 Oh, that's yeah. Right. yeah. Yes. Go through hell and see how humble you are. <laughs> see how you be willing to change. Amen. The sign says now close. <laughs> It says close, but God ain't close. Amen. 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 Huh? Amen. Get, find out what the anointing is. Yes. Find out what the power of God is. Yes. Find yes. out yes. what the word of God says. Yes. Get it down in you that you may speak out and bring change. The church don't need you as a weight. They need you as a military army officer. Amen. Ready yes. for that. Yes. All oh, and know what you're doing with yes. your weight. You are to have a word for the pastor. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. Teach it. Teach us. Huh? Teach us. Mm -hmm. I got clothes. <laughs> you did what God told you to do. Thank you, Father. If I'm not convinced, thank you, Jesus. Something's wrong. Thank you, Father. I'm sick and tired of seeing the church dragging the old man behind me. Come on now. You're like a crackhead. You're laid out. Come on. <laughs> crackheads, a crackhead told me, say, we do better than church. What? Jesus. What? What did she say? How do you say that? It's because we stick together. Amen. Huh? Amen. I had to grip that. You got the pastor in the church trying to wonder where are you coming in and give your life fully? Get enough hit past. Never found dog peace. That's all I need. Crackhead Christians and not even on crack. Come on! Jesus. Oh, my God, my God. It makes me want to cry. You ain't even on drugs! And you got all the attributes.
Children are dying. They shoot and Yes, they are. Yes, sir. They shoot and they don't even care where they're shooting. That's right. Amen. That is so true. We have got to do this. Now, look, I'm going to operate in the moment just for a second. There's somebody in there, you, you, you. there's something been going on in your side, don't you lay your hand like that? Something been going on, you've been getting attacked in your side. So God is touching, he's touching some uh, legs right now. I want you to put your hand up, he's touching some joints. You've been having back headaches. Oh, Place your hand on the back of your head right now, the anointing is moving for you. Thank right you, now. Jesus. Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I'm sick stomach, not able to digest, lay your hand right there on your stomach right now. Touch! 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 Right there in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Somebody standing with somebody that's going through some cancer treatments. God said, you lay your hands, let your healing. God wants you to pray with them, their healing come to their body. Amen. You may say, what is this? I never, this, this is what we should operate. It's time, people, that you know the anointing of God. That he may speak through you and prophesy to you. He said, desire the gifts of spirit. What do you desire? Thank you. Lift up your hands. Chest pains. Lay your hands on that chest right there in the name of Jesus. Right in Jesus' name. Of course, there's the 